Hey everybody, this is JD Gaming. I know I'm technically still on break, but this last weekend we had an amazing new product, the Legendary Dex 2 come out, and I just had to do an opening of this for you guys. This is going to be an amazing, this is right off of the trails of last year's very popular Legendary Dex with three of Yugi Moto's greatest duels from throughout the series. And as you can see here, this box is a lot more reflective. It looks really cool to handle in person. And it looks a lot more like the Gold Sarcophagus or pretty much the box that the Millennium Puzzle originally came in. So really, really excited about how this thing looks. It looks phenomenal. And I think already in a couple of like the stores I've been to, they're down to like one or two boxes just because these things are flying off the shelf. So if you're interested in these, do pick them up. On the back, I was actually surprised to see that they had extra details. They have original Exodia, of course. This is uh, from the new card, the legendary Exodia Incarnate. We see some of the new promos that they've thrown in here. And the idea about this product, as I found out, is rather than making three decks that are entirely for nostalgia, they tried to revamp the strategies, the Exodia, Blue Eyes, and Red Eyes strategies, and then they included a lot of cool reprints in them to kind of update them for the modern era. As you guys all know we recently got blue eyes cards and red eyes cards and this set has a bunch of new exodia cards that they created over in the ocg and so they decided to make this cool set that not only has a bunch of nostalgia cards but also lets you go and access all of these new cards from the past year as well so that's enough talking without further ado i'm gonna get this thing open i don't know if i want to use scissors on this just because i don't want to like damage the gold so we're just gonna yeah we're gonna rip it off right here but man, even without the plastic, this thing is looking even more reflective. As you can see, you can see my little setup here. Um, but yeah, this thing looks phenomenal in all of its golden glory. And we're going to go ahead and open this thing up. So first off, let's open this promo pack. The Secret Rare looks really, really cool. Usually, uh, I'm here in North America, and I don't always like how the North American cards look. I've seen some like OCG cards and European versions of you know, even the English cards. And I noticed that the quality of them just seems to be different, but can't say I'm displeased with this. We have Dark Burning Attack, a spell that says if you control a Dark Magician Girl monster, destroy all face and monsters your opponent controls. So it's a right geki for Dark Magician Girl. We have Dark Burning Magic, which is a combination of Dark Magic Attack and Dark Burning. Or I guess normally it's Black Burning, but, um, you know, censorship in the TZG. If you control monsters whose original names are Dark Magician and Dark Magician will destroy all cards your opponent controls. So it's a combination of Dark Burning Attack and Dark Magic Attack, not only in name, but also in their card effects, which is pretty cool. And it's a quick play spell. And then, of course, the trap card so many people were waiting for, Eternal Soul, Trap Continuous, Every Dark Magician in your monster zone is unaffected by your opponent's card effects, which is insane. And if this card leaves the field, destroy all monsters you control. You can only use the following effect of Eternal Soul once per turn. You can only use, uh, activate one of these effects. Either special summon a Dark Magician from your hand or graveyard, or add a Dark Magic Attack or Thousand Knives from your deck to your hand, which of course lets you handle your opponent's back row for the Dark Magic Attack or their front row for a Thousand Knives. So very, very cool cards right here, and really neat to see them in secret as well. And we're going to go... Should I go left to right? We're, we're, let's go in order of, um, I think, the protagonists, pretty much. Uh, I'm going to go with Yugi first, just because we have him from last year already. Where do they have the little thing? I see, like, the little slit here, but I don't see anywhere that I can actually, like, pull. There's no tab, per se. So I don't want to damage the deck, but, eh, there we go. But, yeah, the main reason I'm opening this one first is just because... I think the Yugi one, since we already had last year, it's a little less of something that everyone's anticipating. I do know like a lot of promo cards in here are really cool, but we'll start with this. So we have Slife of the Sky Dragon in its playable form, which is very cool to actually have, uh, along with Obelisk the Tormentor and the Winged Dragon of Raw. So I'm actually really glad that these are the playable versions this time because we've been getting a lot of reprints of the unplayable versions, and as cool as they are, it's nice to finally have these as a set together. We just recently had the... Uh, tins that brought off the promos to us, um, but to have Raw in here as well is very neat. We have the legendary Exodia Incarnate, which looks insane. This is like what he's supposed to look like when he comes out of that pentagram thing. But it says, cannot be normal summoner set, must be special summoned from your hand by tributing one forbidden one monster, and cannot be special summoned by other ways. This card gains a thousand attack for each forbidden one monster in your graveyard. It's unaffected by other cards' effects, and once per turn during your end phase, you can add a forbidden one monster from your graveyard to your hand. 
When this card is destroyed by battle and sent to the graveyard, because it can't die by card effects, you can reveal any number of Forbidden One monsters in your hand, and if you do, draw one card for each. So very interesting new support card for Exodia, but overall I'm just stoked that this thing is an amazing piece of artwork to put together with the Exodia pieces in the collection. Like, if you've ever been looking for a card to put right between Exodia's legs when you're putting him in a binder, this is like the card for that right there. We have Ties of the Brethren, which is a very cool new support card. Um, great ways you could use this thing with like Magic Spectres, Gadgets, and Satellar Knights, and things like that. But overall, just a really cool card from Little Yugi's deck when he faced Pharaoh Atem. So pay a 2,000 life to target one level 4 or lower monster you control. For the rest of this turn after this resolves, you cannot special summon monsters, but for this effect, you can special summon two monsters from your deck of the same type, attribute, and level as that monster as long as they have different names from each other and that monster. You cannot attack that turn, but still a very cool card. And then Obliterate, finally. It's awesome to have Exodia's attack in trap form as well. Uh, since this is also a new card, I'll read it as well. You can target a monster on the field, send an Exodia, or I guess one forbidden one, monster or Exodia card from your hand or deck to the graveyard, and if you do, return that target to the hand. If this card is sent from the spell and trap zone to the grave, you can target a Forbidden One monster or Exodia card in your graveyard and add it to your hand. You can only activate one Obliterate per turn and use its effect once that turn, so that's pretty cool. Common pieces of Exodia, which is very, very weird, because I believe we've had common limbs in, like, Dark Beginning and stuff, but I don't believe we've ever had a common Exodia head until now, so this is very, very weird to see, but, um, yeah, they actually fixed the card text on this if you have all the pieces in addition to this card in your hand. I remember Master Collection version of this said in you hand, and it's just like, what? That's messed up. But um, we have Exodia Necros. I didn't know this was in this deck, so that's pretty cool. Dark Magician and Dark Magician Girl with original artworks. Buster Blader, Silent Magicians level 4 and 8. The Tricky, which is very cool from the duel, uh, ceremonial duel against the Pharaoh. Big Shield Garden, a Magician's Valkyria is a very cool reprint. Blast Magician, Blockman, uh, which is pretty much just Legos. We have Marshmallow, Sangin with the Errata, of course. Um, so pretty much you can only use him once per turn, and it's, um, you can't activate the cards that you add that turn. Gold Sark is a nice reprint. Swords of Revealing Light, Magical Dimension, Magicians Unite, Tricky Spell 4, Thousand Knives, Dark Magic Attack, Contract with Exodia for that Necros, Messenger of Peace, Dark Factory of Mass Production, Reincarnation, Seeker Village of the Spellcasters, one of the best reprints in the Yugi deck by far. Pot of Duality, because Greed, of course, isn't allowed. Mirror Force, Magical Hats, Magic Cylinder, Magician Circle, Backup Soldier, Gravity Bind, and this is a gem. Wow, this Yugi token with the Dark Magician and some crazy, like, shadow... Um, Shadow Realm background stuff here. That's really, really cool. Usually I don't like the tokens all that much because the backgrounds are kind of lame, but this set overall has some really, really neat tokens. Uh, so definitely glad to see those. We'll go with the Kaiba deck next. We'll go with uh, Joey Lass for all of his uh, passion. If you guys remember, like, the Power of Chaos games, there's, like, Yugi the Destiny, Kaiba the Revenge, Joey the Passion. So we'll do it in the order of those, I guess. Maiden with Eyes of Blue as an ultra looks very, very cool. Melody of Awakening also as an Ultra print, so this looks very neat. We have Blue Eyes Ultimate Dragon back as an Ultra for the first time in a while, I think. I don't remember it being a foil print since, like, Yugi's World. Um, wait, no, it didn't get one in Yugi's World. That was Dragon Master Knight. I don't remember. Maybe, like, Duelist Pack Kaiba had the last Ultra. Something like that. Common Blue Eyes, which looks very weird, but still very cool. And then we have three different artworks of that, which is very neat. Dragon Spirit of White, which was one of the many reprints I was surprised to see come so soon, considering Shining Victories was just May. Like, it was this summer, and to have it already be printed, you know, it's surprising. Um, Kaiba Man, we have White Stone. Stone of Ancients, which is another surprising reprint. Protector and Master, not in foil. Battle Ox, classic vanilla here. Lejin, Force Raider, which looks really, really cool. Uh, Alexandrite Dragon, which I guess is just to go with the Kaiba theme of having a dragon. They should have gone with, like, Luster Dragon or something. Blade Knight, Ancient Lamp, Tiger Dragon, which is pretty cool. Uh, Kidmodo Dragon, I think this is a super original, so it's pretty neat to have that as a reprint. King of the Swamp, I didn't even realize this was a reprint in here, but this card has been so expensive. It was, like, a 5 to $10 card ever since Fluffles started getting tons of support, and, you know, even as a common in Yugi's world, this thing was a pain to have to pull. Rider of the Stormwinds. I think this was from the Blue Eyes Structure deck, but it looks really, really neat. 
We have burst stream of destruction, which is supposed to be white lightning, but you know, that's like the OCG name for white lightning, so that's why. Beacon of white, mausoleum of white, polymerization, anime controller, um, aka JD Gaming, shrink, silent doom, ancient rules is a cool card, trade in is a good reprint, where art thou, pot of dichotomy, I didn't even realize they added another bot in here. It's kind of weird that they put that in this deck, considering this is the deck that has mainly dragons and spellcasters, like do they even have a third type in here? I guess if you throw in, like, Blade Knight and random stuff like that, it has the type. But, yeah, I didn't realize Pot of Dichotomy is in here, so that's pretty cool. Fusion Substitute, so you have two polymerizations. Unexpected Die is an unexpected reprint, in my opinion, but it's a great card. Supports Vanillas, and it's just fantastic to have going forward with some more Vanilla support. Negate Attack, Final Attack Order, Shadow Spell, not Fiendish Chain. That's kind of sad. I think they put Fiendish Chain in here in the... Um, the Kaiba structure deck that's coming up. Cloning, Fusion Reserve, great common reprint. Jar of Avarice, I didn't realize was in here either, but that's a great card. And then Azurize is a common as well. First of the Dragons, that's another reprint I didn't realize was in here. So many cards. Like, I didn't check the entire deck list for this, so this is just a bunch of surprises in addition to the nostalgia. And of course, the Blue Eyes, uh, this one doesn't look so much like the Shadow Realm in the background. It looks more like a space, or maybe like Northern Lights or something, but really, really cool. Kaiba token here. And last but certainly not least, we have Joey the Passion with all of his Red Eyes cards. I think this is one of the most sought after. I don't even have a slit here. Konami, what am I supposed to do? I guess the slit's over here. It's like misplaced. Yeah, got it. <laughs> but it wasn't in the same spot as the other two. Yeah, re Red Eyes, I think, was the most anticipated reprint. Oops. Just because uh, we all expected it to be in the tins and then they weren't. So, good thing they finally gave us the opportunity to pick these guys up. We have a glorious, very gorgeous Black Stone of Legend in Ultra Rare. We have Return of the Red Eyes. I think this is a promo card as a super in like the special or like, like the whatever preview edition they have. So, kind of uh, interesting to see that as a foil. Red Eyes, Flare Metal Dragon's always welcome. This Red Eyes, they really should have done a different version, I personally think. But um, I guess they did make the original Red Eyes uh, Black Dragon's image in the Millennium Pack. That's what it was. Red Eyes Black Flare Dragon's cool. Red Eyes Archfiend of Lightning. Red Eyes Retro Dragon. Black Metal Dragon. Axe Raider. Alligator Sword with its awesome flavor text. If you haven't checked it out, go check it out. I'm not going to butcher Joey. Or I guess, um, uh, what was his name? Wilson, Wilson, uh, you, you know, the, the voice of Joey, I'm not going to butcher his voice, because um, he's just a legend. We have Baby Dragon, Jinzo, Goblin Attack Force, Gear Free the Iron Knight, Rocket Warrior, Blue Flame Swordsman, Time Wizard, Phoenix Gear Free, and some Gemini Monsters. The idea here was because so many of the new Red Eye support is Gemini, and because um, they wanted to show off Joey's feisty nature and his teamwork style, uh, kind of to piggyback off of, I guess, the the Swamp and Lava Battle Guards, the, the creators of the deck decided, you know, let's go with Gemini Monsters because the kind of teamwork necessary to successfully play them uh, and support the monsters is representative of him. Gemini Summoner, Blazewing Butterfly, Dark Valkyria, Command Knight, and Valkyrian Knight. Um, Keeper of the Shrine, which I always thought was a Blue Eyes related card, but since it's dark, I guess it does make a lot more sense that it's Red Eyes. We have Inferno Fire Blast. Red Eyes Fusion, cool reprint. Cards of Red Stone, another great reprint. Polymerization, Salamandra. Scapegoat, Foolish Burial. Supervise. Roulette Spider as a common. Symbols of Duty. MST, good old MST. Red Eyes Spirit, Kunai with Chain. Call the Haunted. Torrential Tribute, Burst Breath. Curse of Anubis. And then for fusions, we have Archfiend, Black Skull Dragon, and Alligator Sword Dragon. And then this, okay, this Red Eyes looks very, very cool with this Joey artwork. That, I must admit. I just don't like the green, crazy version that they have with this. Like, they started making this in, like, one, like the first structure deck. Um, it's a variant of, like, the jump version that has more of a background like this. But personally, I just like this one, but that's just me. Anyway, that is the product in its entirety. As you can see, we've hit the bottom of the barrel here. There's nothing else inside. Um, but yeah, this was a blast to open. So down in the comments below, let me know what your favorite card was that they put in here. And if there's anything awesome that you would have liked to have seen in this product, that could have made it even better. This is JD Gaming. Hope you guys enjoyed, and I'll see you guys next time.